everyone was talking about that game. There was a buzz around town, people texting you and reaching out. You do know when something good is going to happen. You could feel the guys were ready to go. Oh, it was a, a playoff mentality, a playoff style game. Them fans never stopped from start to finish. They just sang their hearts out all night. You could feel it on the bench and you could feel it. The players felt it as well. We knew what we had to do to beat them. Uh, we knew that they were going to be good. It's a cup final, it's a one off. This is something I don't think I'll ever forget. It really couldn't have been scripted any better. It was just an absolute magical night. The coronavirus is the biggest threat this country has faced for decades, and this country is not alone. I urge you to stay at home, protect our NHS, and save lives. March 2020, first lockdown. First and foremost, obviously, worried about everybody's safety and health and making sure the guys got home all right from that season. But there was a disappointment there that we didn't get to finish that season to see what would have been in the playoffs. Fast forward through the summer to so start to build a new team for the following season. Um, did quite a bit of recruitment that, that summer. Uh, and then near the end of it, to, to see that we weren't going to be able to play was frustrating and disappointing. Coming into the season, after a long time away from ice hockey and, and obviously what had gone here, on here with the vaccination centre and everything we'd been through, you know, we really want to just be a, a competitive hockey team. The good news is we'd done a lot of recruitment that following summer, so it was kind of like some of the groundwork was done. We'd made some contacts uh, and, and had an, a rough idea of what, how we wanted to build this team for this season. It's the first competitive game of the season here in the Dundee Ice Arena and it is the Premier Sports Elite League Challenge Cup game between the Dundee Stars and the Belfast Giants. You know, the start of the season usually is a pre-season anywhere else, so we do approach it as a bit of our pre-season, um, but also you know, a pre-season with an importance of winning. Um, and we wanted to finish top of that group. So, Mr. Craig then in the centre. Drops the puck and we are off and running on the first competitive game here in the Dundee Ice Arena. Lake lines one up, shoots and scores! Ben Lake for the opener on this one for the visitors. One minute and 48 seconds gone. Ben Lake, quick as you like, up the centre, through on Morrison and makes no mistake with the finish. Dundee nil, Belfast one. Morrison looking for a chance to escape to the bench here. Good and a good job. Keep that pressure on. He's done a great job here. Takes this in close and scores. Well, Goodwin with the pressure, and it pays off his second of the evening. And if it wasn't done before, it certainly is now. It's Dundee three, Belfast six. Starting right from the, the very first game of the season, right through to probably after Christmas. Um, you know, this this team was hit with the injury bug and the sickness bug, and you know. Sometimes facing these things early on in the city season is a great thing because it brings that adversity to the group right away. And adversity reveals character. It's one of the things that hangs in our dressing room. And um, you certainly need to face some level of adversity throughout the season. Otherwise, when the games get tough, you don't really know what you have or what you're made of. And um, so those that adversity in the first half of the season, I think, has, has made this group stronger and, and become a little closer together as well. Good evening. 
evening and welcome along to the SSE Arena in Belfast for tonight's Premier Sports Challenge Cup match between the Stenline Belfast Giants and the Fife Flyers. Nice drop of the shoulder by Rue up, he sends it ahead to Goodwin. Goodwin puts the brakes on at the blue line. David Goodwin sends it goalward, just wide of target, a chance, and it's a goal for the Belfast Giants. Here comes Jordan Boucher. Boucher, oh, lovely move at the blue line, but Boucher gets a bit of space and he's going for an attempt to wrap around there. It was taken away from him by Benson. A shot from the blue line, ricochet in, takes a deflection. And the Giants are two quick goals. And Lewis Hook puts the Giants 2 0 ahead in the third goal of the season. Boucher with a turn right out in front, a great bit of skill by Jordan Boucher. And a power play goal for the Belfast Giants, 6.29 to go in the second period. Back to the blue line for Long. Long gets a move around. Anderson, Griffin Reinhardt, battling hard down low. His man dropped on the floor, Kieran Long now with space, sends one goal where his ricochets off him. And Mark Cooper again, all about the pressure from the Belfast Giants and two, another two quick goals. Mark Cooper from Kieran Long. Boucher spins the center ice and she collides into Ben Lake and there's a chance here for Anderson. Anderson forward and it's got their goal. Turnover at center ice for the Giants and Fife Flyers get their first of the night. The clock ticks down, a shot from distance. Wide the target of Shane Owens net and the Belfast Giants finish their group stages of the Challenge Cup with another victory over the five Flyers, a 4-1 scoreline at the SSC Arena. Welcome to the Skydome Arena here in Coventry, ahead of tonight's Premier Sports Challenge Cup quarter-final first leg between the Genting Casino, Coventry Blaze and the Belfast Giants. It was a big game for us. I think a lot of guys weren't used to the aggregate scoring, and so uh, for them to get a, a, a taste of that was definitely different for some, some guys having a 120-minute game as opposed to a 60-minute game. So uh, the referees this evening are Mr. Tom Perring and Mr. Liam Sewell. Danny Beresford and Ryan Fraley on the lines. We are underway here in Coventry. Halbert over to Thompson. That drops it off. One timer comes off a body in front, picked up by Eichstadt. Another attempted. One timer, they score! A big tip, I think, in front stoop from Evan Bluedoff. Check it on the replay, but the Coventry Blaze on the power play get the first goal of the night. Going into the the second period in Coventry, I, I was confident with our game. I thought we were playing well. To JJ Pikinich, dropping it off back for Goodwin. Looks at the net, comes off Hamannick's skate on the shot attempt. Pikinich, oh, he stick handles around Forbes, shoots upstairs and scores! JJ Pikinich with a snipe on the power play. As both teams on the man advantage trading goals. And it's uh, kind of all eyes on what the Blaze can do to respond. It's, almost, it's, it's weird, it almost seems like an inevitability that the Giants are going to get one soon. And you know, I hate to say that, but um, this is a very good team we're watching as Matthew Thompson will come around shorthanded with the puck. Has to, oh, that did not look good. The man left his knee out. There's going to be a penalty. We were down a lot of bodies and I think uh, after I got kicked out, we, were, uh, we went down 3-1 there. And then we had maybe two lines, 4D. It meant we were down real short bodies, you know, to a point where we were trying to do the math in our head as who who's going to play the next shift, in what position. Picks up one by the Blaze. Goodwin and Cooper, the forwards on the PK for the Giants as that shot comes through and in. Halbert again. It might have come via Marsh. We'll see. Out the penalty killers and the Blazer reading them their rights on the power play. Eichstadt settles it down. A low wrist. I've got no idea if it collects anyone else, but the Blazer 2 1 up. Halbert scrapping that puck out of the zone and Blazer. Oh, a big bump comes in on the blue line as Bluedoff tried to take it in deep. I didn't see who stepped up for the hit. 
There's uh, Kevin Rain again. Does that loose puck out for Marsh? Puck springs off Beskarawani. Commentary might have a chance with Halbert. He shoots safe. Rebound. They score. Bl on the doorstep is Bludoff. Beskarawani's waving his helmet around. The Blaze are waving their arms in the air. And the Coventry Blaze have got a two goal lead. They scored two quick ones and uh, the guys never quit. And I think that was the biggest thing about that game. The mood on the bench was, hey, we just got to keep this close. We know we can get these guys at home. We can kind of take care of business there. We can't, uh, you know, we can't lose by two, three, four goals or anything like that. We got to regroup there in between the second and third period and just spoke to the players about uh, challenging ourselves to, to keep this game real tight and, and to compete real hard. Um, and to be honest with you, I was, I think that that is the moment, that third period, when this team really became a team. I've said that to them many times and I, I strongly believe it. When you're faced with that level of adversity that, you know, if you could go in that third period and give up a couple more against, it's going to be a tough mountain to climb and you're likely out of the Challenge Cup. Picking it. Rip. Well, hard pass across the blue line. Wrist shot. Oh, comes through. The netscaping. They score. Picking it. Just second of the night. A broken play. That the puck never really got to Mott in the first place, but it certainly got to the back of the net in the second place. In the second of the night for Picking it, and the Giants are back within one. Cooper, former South Carolina Stingray, it's it to Picking it. It's it back for Conway. Under some pressure, Venus hacking away, couldn't get the puck. Puck's on in front of a good win, a rebound, Cooper, a sprawling double save from Martin, it's jammed in, and the Giants will tie it. The referee has just washed it out though. I assume it'll be reviewed. The, the, the Giants are adamant they've tied the game as we look again on the replay. The referee has washed it out, but David Goodwin is absolutely clear that that has gone in and he is celebrating. That third goal was definitely a goal. Um, net was knocked off. Um, no goal line technology. Um, and Coventry do have a sign on the wall. There'll be no goal line technology at this game. So, But uh, yeah, you know, could have come back here with, um, with uh, a tie, a 0 zero game. But uh, we were one goal down. And, you know, that's, like, as I said, that second one was a, a huge goal. To me, it wasn't about the disallowed goal or not. I knew that from that moment on, they weren't going to be denied in, in that game at home. You know, as long as we had gotten it back to, you know, uh, a respectable number, it was, we were down by one going into that game at home ice. Um, after the performance I seen in that third period, I wasn't concerned about coming home and, and winning a hockey game. Uh, to be honest, I think that was the turning point of our season. I thought the team stuck together. Um, we gutted it out, and uh, we, we'll take that three-two coming back to our place any day of the week. I think that really fueled us for the second leg of that, uh, that quarterfinal. I know how difficult it is to come into this building. It's different travel for every other team. They're not used to flying day of, uh, so coming in, we, we know that every time we play teams that are coming in flying in the day of, we have to get on them right, right early. We love playing here at the SSC. We felt very confident, only being down one goal. Um, you know, we wanted to start fast, and, and once we got those first couple, we, we knew we were in good shape. Reinhardt gets there first, though, with those big long strides. Another terrible pass up the middle, this time to Marsh. And that's a couple of passes into the middle of the ice that certainly I can see Adam Kiefer across from me. He looks frustrated behind the face mask, but certainly he will have words there. They've got to keep the puck out of the middle. Here's Goodwin. Goodwin sends it along. Wow! Oh, what a finish by Pickinich! Jay, Jay Pickinich. It's 3-3 on aggregate. We knew, we knew for a fact that Coventry were one goal ahead. We knew they were going to come out flying, you know, which they did. They came out flying trying to get that second goal, but we held on and once we got that tying goal to, to push it, you know, to, to a tie, we were just on a roll then. There was nothing, nothing stopping that team. Knight tries to play it up the wall past Bludoff, but Conway lifts his stick and sends it along for Pickinich. Pickinich to Goodwin. Goodwin with the shot. Scores! Puck to Twine! Oh, so fine! The Giants lead 2 0. Cooper. Good hockey IQ from Cooper. There's a redirect in front by Doggett! Great hand! 
Wings, great read in front. Cooper puts the puck through. Doggett tips it home. It's three knocking Giants. Well, Forbes thinking about it, trying to get away. Short hand, that's a real good read and react from Beskarawani, though. Back the other way, Goodwin. Well, what a finish by Conway! Goodwin to Conway, tic-tac-toe. The Giants running on all cylinders this evening. Right now, there is Hook, Hook on a breakaway. Hook in on a load, what a chance, he finishes it! Picks up his own rebound, waves goodbye! Hook maybe with the final dagger into the heart of the Coventry Blaze. Gibson and Kivalotti attacking down the right side. Kivalotti walks in, Kivalotti scores! To give up that, that power play goal at the end of the game, it, it, it kind of stings me a little bit, but at the end of the day, it's all about the wins. Max Stewart throws a hit, why not? There's Hamannick to Lockinen. Five seconds remaining. And the crowd on its feet at SSE Arena. They lose leg one, three, two. But a dominant performance, 5-1 in leg number two. After that 3-2 loss in leg one, they correct that from December 8th. And they will skate off with a 7-4 score on aggregate. So we're in Nottingham a couple of days before the semi-final. Massive, massive game. And we didn't, you know, I think it was the first period, we give up two, two goals in like 15 seconds. Welsh, Norwich takes over towards the net. Rebounds there, just behind the skate. Coming on to this one is Bayajian! Back here oh. for Bayajian again. One on one, Bayajian, oh, he's magic! Another goal for Robbie Bayajian, it's two nothing. That game kind of got away from us pretty quickly there. Some plays that they capitalized on. That never happens to this team. When we get scored on, we're always focused on that, you know, face off after. But, you know, it's one of them things that happened. But the guys kept kept going, kept going, kept going. They got the goal back. The goal that Coop scored with 0.4 seconds left on the clock, which at 11 seconds, I think it was, um, they iced the puck but there was 14 seconds left on the clock and they put it back from 11 to 14. If they hadn't have done that, that would never happen. One timer from Reinhardt past the right post and it's going to be blocked by Brady Norwich. It's still alive right in front there. Chance of the last second is in, I don't believe it. I don't believe it at the last second with half a second on the clock. The Giants have leveled it up. And we were on a roll and we, we were coming hard and they knew if we scored, they were going to be, it's going to be a long night. Scott Conway, 28 goals, 43 assists so far this season. Will he add a shootout goal to that? Yes, he will. Was it ever in doubt? Matt Lane, that's the score. Must score. As the Giants take two points, Matt Lane. Jackson Whistle up high, Lane shoots and it's saved by Jackson Whistle. And it is the Belfast Giants who take the shootout victory. The luck of, of playing against Nottingham the previous weekend, obviously, and seeing that they're a different, much different team, and even in the way they played was different. So to get to see them so uh, close to that semi-final meant, meant that we weren't no surprises going into that game on Wednesday. We knew they thought they could play with us. We had our way with them throughout the season. We outscored them I think 19 to 3 within three games playing against them and so uh, we knew we couldn't take them lightly. They were definitely a different team at that point. We had played them the weekend before and you know we were able to squeeze one out against them and so I think that was kind of a, a wake-up call for us going into the the semi-finals where we knew we couldn't take them lightly and we knew they were going to come out and, and try to win. I just remember the talks before the games about how, you know, we worked so hard all season and to get the opportunity to play in a game like that. I goes through the middle, pitch stick from the defenseman Massey though. Massey again steps up there and it goes through the chance for Goobin. Goobin the shot, he scores! David Goobin jumped on the mistake at the blue line. Skits to the top of the circle, 
and he fires it low past Kevin Carr for the chance. And the first goal of the evening here at the SSC Arena. Starting from his own end now, here comes Brassard. Cross ice to Poifan. Nice play there by Rio, but there's a chance at the blue line. Stepping in, takes a shot, what a finish. 1-1. One, one. Absolutely outstanding finish from Jeremy Welsh. A turnover from a big mistake off the wall from the Belfast Giants, and it's tied things up here in Belfast. Pesco was kind of injured going into that weekend, and we have full confidence in both our goalies, so it was great to see uh, Wisk get some recognition that uh, after that game. We have the best tandem goalies in the league, so we really don't mind who's playing in net because we have full confidence that they're going to make the save um, when we need them to. On the bench during the game, when it was still nil-nil, I was talking to Jackson, and Jackson was like, hey, Goody, you know, if you get a chance, go, go low glove. Like, I think you can get a low glove. So I was like, okay, okay. And then later on in the game, I heard Kiefer, you know, trying to encourage the forwards to all be shooters out there. So then on my, on my two different two-on-ones that I got, I had Wiss's voice in one ear saying, go low glove, and then I had Kiefer's voice in my other ear saying, being a shooter. So thankfully, I was able to put a few home, uh, you know, low glove, so it worked out. Just a little slack, plays like that. Turns into a rush, though. Gibbon scores! His second goal of the night. You just touched on it, Deco. It was a, it was a bounce and parking. Well controlled by the captain. And he puts the chance 2-1 up, out of nothing. Two huge goals by our captain that night. One last chance for the Nottingham Panthers. Here comes Lane. He goes cross days to Ma uh, Myers. Myers feeds it inside. Belfast get the stick on it. Can't be cleared. Shot forward. It's gloved down by Kevin Rain and it's the horn. Nice signs. The Belfast Giants in a really tight game here against the Panthers this evening. They get the 2 1 win. And the Belfast Giants will host the Challenge Cup final in March. To get the win was amazing and just to know that we'd be able to play in the finals at home in front of these fans was, uh, was pretty special. There's so much time in between the semifinal and the final, so it did take a little bit of time for it to set in, like, wow, we're having a final at home at the SSC. Everybody's fully aware. We're not, we're not hiding the fact that there's a, a home one-off final for the Challenge Cup um, you know, in a couple weeks' time or as it got closer to the time, you know, just in, in a few days' time. Uh, we're not hiding from it, but certainly I think it was easier given the space the spot that we were in in the league to to focus on each game one at a time. And I thought the guys did a great job at that. Um, and then you know, we also talked about controlling some games leading up to that so that we weren't beating ourselves up, you know, and, and trying to pull the goalie to come back into games as much as we felt like we would probably had been in it throughout that, that month span prior to that. We were squeaking by some games and we wanted to try to regain control of, of the way we're playing and, and, and our opponent. Everyone was talking about that game and uh, it was just kind of cool hearing people that aren't normally fans telling me, hey Goody, I'm coming to the game on Wednesday. Wednesday's gonna be awesome. And it kind of it put into perspective how big of a match it was gonna be. The days before practicing, the full bowl was set up. You knew uh, there was a buzz in the air. There was a buzz around town, people texting you and reaching out. Obviously, we, we had the big weekend versus Sheffield at home, which is an emotional weekend given where we're at with them in the league. You just hope that we had enough to continue to play our game on the Wednesday in the Cup Final. And I felt that once we got past that weekend of Sheffield and um, got a little bit of a rest and then came back, you could feel the guys were ready to go. So we weren't concerned about the effort level that we'd get on, on, on Wednesday. Guys just did this stuff, did what they had to do, skate, stretch, whatever they had to do, and they were gone, focused. You do know when something good is going to happen. You know it, you know it in your, you feel it. 
it's something you won't forget. Going out, stepping on the ice for warm-ups. I'm just trying to have fun with it. I'm trying not to get too tense and joke around with the guys a little bit, loosen the guys up because I know it's going to be an intense game. It was exciting coming out to those flames right at the beginning of the game. I just remember uh, kind of coming out at the start of the game there, and I like legit had chills. It's over. It's time to play. Bitter batter. Let's get at her. The Challenge Cup final underway. Conway picks up a bobbling puck, sends it through. Tipped down by Goodman. Goodman got the shot away, but patted away by Karut. Here's Conway on the wraparound. A couple of jabs at it, and Karut will hold on. Cooper. Right on the doorstep, and certainly Cooper not afraid to go to those greasy areas. Dixon to Crandall, four forwards on the power play. Here's Reed, Reed with a chance, going down to block it was Rain. Pressure, three players right down in the corner. A chance here, Murph. Long hook off the post. Uh, we knew that they were going to be good. It's a cup final, it's a one-off. Uh, what we wanted to do was, was stick to our game plan for a full 60 and wear them down. I thought the first period, we controlled the majority of that period. I think we held them to five shots. Uh, I thought we, you could tell that we were skating well. Um, I liked our game, and you know, it was just a matter of, of solving Matt Kruth, you know, and that's what it came down to, I think. Each team had their scoring chances, and uh, you know it was a, a playoff mentality, a playoff style game. Kind of takes a goal to open things up, always in those in those one-off championship games. So. Um, the first there was just up and down and both goalies played well and um, everyone was just kind of getting their feet settled into the game and seeing what the game had for us. Puck is down and it's Conway. Lake drops it back, Reinhardt gets it poked away from him and now the quick Sanford trying to track it down, Sanford causing some problems, giveaway out front, here's Cougar, Cougar scores! One nuts in Cardiff. Well, a good job from Sanford and Cox on the forecheck, putting pressure on the Belfast Giants defense. Kugler came in late through the slot area. Eventually the puck comes out to him and he releases it straight away. Kind of looked like it almost went off the post and in. Well, the first goal was always going to be important, but here come the Devils again. Here's Kugler, Kugler out wide, they score! Sanford! Right on cue, Kugler to Sanford, it's 2 nothing Devils! Well, the speed of this line is exceptional. If you give them half a step, they're going to make it tough on you. You know, when you're making mistakes, then they are probably going to capitalize on them. And, you know, it's hard to say that you're going to have a perfect game and nobody's going to make a mistake. We knew, you know, it would happen eventually. It's just trying to minimize those and, you know, if they do score, just staying with it and trying to make sure that we get ourselves back in the game. We always say anytime we're down one or two it's, it's nothing to us. We can, we've got the, we've got the players and we've got the goaltending to uh, kind of see our way back. Here's Crandall. Crandall with the flip play. Crandall with the shot off the post. Everyone thought he was going to pass the read but he ripped it off the iron. Cooper trying to get away from Cox. Cooper with a really good play. Goes in the backhand. What a stop by Carruth. Cooper was poised on the puck but couldn't finish it off. Well, there's 0.9 of a second remaining on the clock. Really, the only thing you can do here is try and shoot right off the faceoff if you're the Belfast Giants. They do go forward. Well, it nearly worked out. Carruth and company nearly made. That hard work on themselves, but he got a piece of it. Time will expire. And Karut and the Devils will get into the locker room with a 2 nothing lead. In the moment, I, was, I felt worse about our second period than, than I did watching it back. We made a couple mistakes, and they did end up in the back of our net. And then knowing what we were up against to try to get those ones back and in a very good Matt Carruth, you know, that was a bit daunting on us, and I think that that maybe allowed and spiraled a little bit, and we made a few more turnovers, and um, just, we weren't happy with our second period after that. Um, but we were able to get uh, you know, a period break and, and regroup and, and come back. After the period, I go down, take the gloves off the guy, put them on the dryers, um, then I go in the room, go see, see what the mood is in the room. And the guys were pretty upbeat. You know, said, guys, we're in a good position. We're, we're good here. Um, and I remember myself going in and said, guys, 
You get the first one, you'll get two, and someone shouts out, if we get two, we're getting three. I think you really saw the character in the room where, where guys were speaking up. Everybody was fairly calm, you know, nobody was pressing the, the panic button a whole lot. Leaders stepped up and were leaders. Uh, Kiefer got the guys going a little bit. You know, his, his face was a little red. I won't say what he said, but uh, he, got, he got mad. He got uh, player Kiefer, I think, in, in that room. And so uh, the guys listened and, and they stepped up big and, you know, they, they followed instructions. And, and at the end of the day, we, we did what we had to do. We just needed to get that one to get these fans into it and, and, and feed off that momentum. Um, and it was just about reminding the guys that there is 7,000 people in this building and we just need to give them a reason to cheer. Bomb! Good shot from the outside, had plenty of velocity, but again, perfect angle by Carew to see the puck like a beach ball right now. Here's Hook. Hook with the shot, rebound, Soy! Soy tucks it home, it's a 2-1 hockey game! Just a great job for the Giants, getting traffic to the net. Just getting shots to the net with players driving hard to the net. Soy, in the end, is able to knock that out of the air and push it into the back of the net. When I saw that he was kind of walking down with the puck, I was just trying to be net front, trying to you know take the goalie's eyes away a little bit. And when I saw him winding up to shoot, I was just trying to you know just trying to be in the way, just try to be around the net. And he made a nice shot that went around the defenseman and hit the goalie and kind of flew up into the air. And I was lucky to get away from my def uh, defenseman that was on me, and it was pretty much a, just touched the puck and it was in an empty net, and uh, the place erupted. <laughs> We always say anytime we're down one or two, it's, it's nothing to us. We've got the players and we've got the goaltending to uh, kind of see our way back. You, you felt the whole momentum turn, the crowd getting into it and was massive. Just everyone just fed off that crowd after that. Huge goal by Soyzy, awesome play by Hookie. Gary going uh, plus two with a couple assists in that game was pretty awesome as well. So um, we knew when we got that first one, we would uh, we'd be able to roll from there. Davis, big face off winning the diesel. Register, can't get the puck out. Conway, Conway to Goodwin. Goodwin with a shot underneath the glove of Karut and out the other side. A good read by Goodwin, but couldn't hit the target. Here's Pikinich. Pikinich rumbles around the goal, into the crease, good one, score! The captain has tied proceedings at SSC Arena. It's a 2-2 hockey game. Goodwin celebrates with his squad. Pick's been great all year in the offensive zone, one-on-one -on -one with their D. I wanted to give him his space. He was in the corner battling. I knew that if I could just be patient, find a little open area in the slot, I could, uh, he'll find me. And thankfully when he did, I was able to bury it. I saw that pass come out from Pick to Goody in front and Goody's been scoring big goals all year. So uh, I knew he was the one you wanted it with the puck in the, in the slot there. And it went in and just gave us so much life. You could feel it on the bench and you could feel that the players felt it as well and, and the momentum wasn't going to stop. To be honest, I loved it. Like, you know, it was, you know, the hairs on the back of your, your neck standing up and stuff. And and, and be honest, th them fans never stopped from start to finish. They just sang their hearts out all night.
for the rest of that third period. It wasn't a fun thing to see a puck squirt loose and right in front of the crease. Oh, what a stop by Beskarawani as he robbed Sanford with 2.16 on the clock. It looked like he read that play pretty well and, and he was big and, and took up the whole net so you know there wasn't an opportunity and that's a huge save. I was on the ice for it and I kind of made a play I probably shouldn't have. I left the, left the front of the ice to try and go kind of surprise the guy with the puck and he made a great pass into the uh, slot and I, I think I actually said it out loud. I just went, oh my God, and turned around and Besco made an unreal save, challenged him and he kind of had nothing to shoot out and he swallowed it up and I was probably the most relieved guy in the, uh, in the arena that night. Now he's got Goodwin directly back, and that is the play. Goodwin out wide tonight. Knight with a shot, glove down by Carruth with 0.5 of a second remaining, and the relief showing as Carruth closes the left hand on that offering from Knight. Well, 60 minutes won't separate the Giants and the Devils. Soy and Goodwin providing some heroics in the third period after Kugler and Sanford had made it 2-0 through 40 minutes of play. And we're on to sudden death overtime at SSE Arena. Headed into overtime, the guys had life, they had energy again. I think we simplified our game to the point where we knew what we had to do to beat them. And it was just get the puck behind them and, uh, and go retrieve it. And again, tire them out. They're going to be tired. They're going to make mistakes. We knew if we continued to play good hockey that those guys could not play at that level for four or five periods. So we were just super focused on, hey, just keep grinding them down, grinding those D down you know, they're gonna, they're gonna crumble. I don't think there was a guy in our dressing room that kind of didn't believe we were gonna win that game, but at the same time, you can never be too confident as it's, it's a hockey game and it can go either way. There can be chances either way. So just going out there in overtime and kind of keeping our heads, not making any massive mistakes to give them an opportunity because we kind of said to each other, the only chances they were gonna get were the ones we were gonna give them. So. I think if we just played our game like we have been all season, um, we are going to get our chances. The Premier Sports Challenge Cup, overtime, five on five, 20 minutes. History could be made. Here's Doggett. Doggett double team. Someone's going to be open. It's Cooper. Cooper and Lake. Cooper out front. Cooper's good. It's over. It's over. Champions! The challenge was accepted! The challenge was completed! The challenge is over! The Giants win the first trophy of 2022! Kiefer had been preaching all game to get pucks deep, make their D turn. Uh, he gets it deep, uh, makes, I think, register turn there, and then uh, him and Lake get in a battle. Uh, the puck kind of squirts free. I grab it, I look up, and there's kind of a lane to the net, so I was, I was like, take this to the net and see what happens. I was behind the net, and I just saw him in a lot of space, so it was my first initial thought to just go and kind of pick the guy in front of the net for him, get in his way. I think Coop just kind of took the puck to the net and made a good play under their goalie's stick. Don't know if he meant the pass or not, and I don't know if I meant the goal or not either, and it just it went off my stick, and. No bigger goal, definitely, in my career. I looked at Laker after that, and I was like, what do we do here? And then kind of threw my gloves off. Uh, that it was, my momentum was taking me right into the bench, so all the boys were there. It was so exciting, I was so happy for us. In real time, I thought that he just jammed it on the net, but he actually made a little slip pass. Uh, I think it was through Carruth's stick, uh, right to Ben Lake back door. So uh, it was a very big, you know, uh, we call it a big man play, taking the puck to the net. And um, obviously, as soon as he started to, you could tell that he had made that decision to take it to the net. I think the entire bench stood up and, and was ready for what we hoped would, would be the final attack.
We were wondering what, what they were reviewing at first. I thought goalie interference, which I didn't think that could be it. Then I asked Goody, what are they reviewing? Because he'd went over and talked to the refs, and they said offside. I just kind of asked, hey, what's the deal? What's going on? And, and Liam said, hey, I think it's a good goal. Um, they just want to check, and, and Cardiff has every right to, uh, to challenge offsides. You have second doubts, right? If that gets called back, who knows what would have happened. Um, they might have got some momentum off of it. My first initial thought was they were clutching at straws here. And then I heard they were reviewing it because of offside. And I couldn't even remember the play crossing the blue line because there was so much that happened in between. And my head was kind of gone at that point. And uh, so yeah, I wasn't worried at all. Um, but hey, we got to celebrate twice. that it went in I jumped and everybody stood up off the bench and if you've ever felt our bench it's a bit wobbly um, but the moment I was in the air I knew I was fucked. <laughs> <laughs> I've never seen a guy move so fast in all my life because he fell he was up hugging me and I'm like he goes to me he goes top his head just so no one's seen that I went it's a GoPro by my head he went oh shit. <laughs> The next day, all the, the videos and the pictures start coming out on social media, and Kiefer actually sent the video in our group chat as a way to kind of get ahead of it, you know, because he probably knew we were going to see it eventually. So he got ahead of it and made a little joke, you know, poking fun at himself, and uh, it was great. I mean, I probably watched it, you know, 20 times. I still, you know, it's hilarious. He popped up quick, to be fair to him. Yeah, he went down hard, but he got up quick. Here's the moment. Win tonight, and we skate together forever. The Premier Sports Challenge Cup. That exact scenario, picking up the trophy, bringing it back to the guys, that had played in my mind a lot leading up to the game, just knowing that that was an opportunity that could present itself. And it was, uh, it really couldn't have been scripted any better. It was just an absolute magical night and obviously champagne shower. It was, uh, it was really special. Yeah, it's, it's hard to explain the, the feeling you get after that. Just the relief of, you know, of, of winning a championship and, and winning a trophy, it's, it's so hard to come by. It doesn't matter if it's, you know, a Challenge Cup or if it's the Earhart Trophy for, for winning the, the division, right? And so, you know, a trophy is a trophy and, and uh, you know, we, we definitely celebrated like we won the Stanley Cup. The champions, no time for losers, cause we champions of the world. It's the most beautiful thing I think I've ever seen. Um, it's awesome. Always feels, oh, can't explain it. Oh, it's great. Some fan came down and said, Jeff, we got a cowboy hat for you, so I had to come down and grab it. It's always great to be in here and provide for these fans that have been all in support all year and this is what it's all about so we're very happy right now. Oh this is huge I don't think I've ever won one in front of you know this big of a crowd you know in the home fans you can see what it means to everyone see what it means to the city and uh, you know what are three done now. So once you got that first goal in the third the crowd just completely took over the game we rolled one over got a second one David made a nice shot in, uh, in the slot, and um, it's, a, it's amazing. It's loud and it's great. All I can say is that I love these guys. 
We thought we deserved it tonight. We thought we deserved it all year. Still more work to be done, but we're gonna enjoy this one for, uh, for a little bit here. Yeah, I think this is something I don't think I'll ever forget. It was one of the coolest experiences, one of the best hockey games, best environments uh, that I've ever played in. And, uh, you know, I'm just so happy that we have the group of guys that we do because, you know, we have a very good team on the ice, but off the ice, like, there's a lot of really good people in this team and in that dressing room. So to be able to, you know, celebrate it with all of them after was, uh, was, a, was a lot of fun. As, as you're walking around our locker room, you see the pictures of past pr champions here and um, kind of gives you motivation. You're like, hey, I want to be on the wall here. I know, I know what it takes. Having that picture on the wall here it's etched in uh, Belfast Giants history is incredible. You see all the faces on those pictures. It's just incredible to see it now that I've joined that group. It's, it's super special. Yeah, I mean, I've been on both sides of of celebrating a trophy, so I was just kind of happy to watch the players celebrate. It's, it's their hard work that's paid off. But to have Cora in the building was was extra special, and, and to look over to the bench and see them there, and uh, you know, put the medal around her neck, and, and get to see hear her, you know, kind of clapping her hands as if she's she's already picked up one of the Let's Go Giants chant. So that's an incredibly special moment for me as well. I have my wife here and stuff. It's it's uh, again, it's it's very special. You know, she's been my rock throughout the season, and just to have that support at home and and to be able to get away from the game when you need to and and have them there whenever you you need some to get away from from everything is, uh, you know, it's it's special and it's it's important for anybody I think to have that that getaway. First of all, I'm happy that. Everybody that's in this room is in this room because you all deserve it. Uh, it's not just about the team. It's obviously about the family and the, the support system at home. It's a long season and a very stressful season on these players, and I apply a lot of that pressure. So to go home and have that mental break, that's massive. So tonight is for you guys and for those players and for the city, obviously. We started out at the very start of the season. We said our goal is to win not just one, but in everything, right? And today, today is step one, and that's a credit to these guys. Going out for that third period, you realize from the drop of the puck, they weren't going to be denied. Once they got that crowd into it, it was not to, to, to be denied. <laughs> Winning the Challenge Cup has kind of put some thoughts in the boys' mind, like, wow, that was really fun. Like, the partying, the champagne, the locker room, like, going out in the town, everyone around Belfast, you know, congratulating us. And I think, uh, I think the guys want more of that. We're not done at one. I think that was the, the message at the beginning of the year. We wanted to win all three trophies. To be able to be put in a position like this and, and win a trophy, I think it'll help us in the long run. I'm just so glad to be a part of it, and uh, I can't wait to see what, uh, where it takes us next. We did come here for three trophies, and you, you play hockey to win championships. We're not stopping now, and uh, we won't stop until we get all three.